Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be using the new features in 2.91 to make a super cool hologram. Let's get started. So with this new feature, we've got this really cool thing uh, where we can um, take any mesh and turn it into a volume. So if I, uh, I want to create this like hologram thing. So I want to have like a projector cone kind of going up and I want to have some object at the top, you know? So let's uh, shift A, let's grab a cone, let's rotate it on the Y. So let's say this is like our, our projector thing. Uh, the, the, the light that's gonna go up. And then let's take a, let's create a mesh UV sphere and we'll just grab it up, scale this down and bring this up so it's kind of lined up with it. Nice ice cream cone there. And then what we can do is uh, we can take these and uh, we can turn them into a volume. So if we, first up we have to add a new volume to our scene with the new volume object. So you wanna go shift A and then you would come over here to empty and we create an empty volume. Then what we wanna do is we wanna take these guys and we wanna use them in the volume. So we can come over here to the uh, modifier tab and we can add these new modifiers, uh, volume, uh, mesh to volume. Now, if, you, if you've got your mesh, you know, and you're thinking, oh, I wanna add this new mesh to volume thing for it and you're looking for it in here, you're only gonna find volume to mesh. Um, so if you wanna get that, you have to add an empty volume object and then in the volume modifier, you get this modifier tab here. So that's, uh, that's really, really important. So, all right, so let's uh, let's do this. I'm gonna select we'll select our cone first and you can immediately see we get this little mesh, we get this little volume starting to appear. If I hide my cone, you can actually see it there. Um, and then let's add the, let's add this too, why not? Um, I'll uh, hit Shift D to create a new volume. Uh, we'll grab the sphere, there we go. And I'm gonna hide my sphere and my cone and now we've got these, these two objects. All right, so now let's take our uh, volume objects and we're gonna create a new material. And automatically what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a, um, a principled volume shader. So if I come over here, open up my, my view, go to shader editor, you can see it's added in, in a, a principled volume shader. Okay, so why, why is this cool? Why is it exciting that we've got this new volume mesh thing? Well, in the past, in Eevee, there was no way to get this kind of a shape or this kind of control over a volume. You create a circle, a sphere, right? Using a gradient node. You could uh, you could kind of shape things using noise and, and, and whatnot, but you couldn't get specific shapes. You couldn't like make a Suzanne, right? Because there's this there's this uh, node here called, um, let's see, point density node. This point density node allows you to select an object and then it creates a volume that's based on the, the points of that object, right? But this doesn't work in Eevee. It just, it only works in cycles. So we're really limited in EV or in being able to to kind of make volume shapes and stuff. So it doesn't really work. Um, but now we've got this. We can we can get access to it. We can we can work around it. Now you can see what I mean. If I come over here and I create, let's create a Veroni texture, and then a mapping node, and a texture coordinate. The classic three. I'm going to take my generated into the vector and my vector into the vector. And I'll take my distance, and let's say I want to pipe this into the emission strength, right? I'll come over here, pipe it into the emission strength, and whoa, wait a minute, what's going on? We're back to a cube shape. Now, this is how Eevee used to behave uh, when it comes to any kind of volume. You'd always get, no matter what the object was you put the volume material on, you'd always end up with this like cube shape thing. Um, it always took the bounds of that object and made that the size of the, the volume. Um, I'll add in a color ramp as well. So how can we get around this now that, as well you can actually see the, there's the Veroni shader. Um, so how do we get around this? How do we use this and still have the, the size? Well, um, you can see that I can plug it into the density, right? And it's working. It's actually giving me this shape within the, the density node. So if we wanna actually make this thing glow, what we're gonna need to do is use the emission strength, um, but we need to somehow mask out all this stuff. So what we can use is the attribute node. You can see here our, dens our density is using the density attribute called density. Uh, so you can type in any attribute here and it will use it for the density of your, your object. So that's handy, but it means we can also um, access that information and use it for our emission strength. So if I come over here and type in attribute, we get the attribute node and we can type in density. Now if I use this, let's say instead of a Veroni, if I plug my factor in here, 
can see, I am now using emission. I can turn my emission strength up. Oh, sorry, I need to actually plug it into the emission strength. There we go. Now we're getting this as emission, which is great because we can like make it, uh, you know, uh, oh, sorry, that's not the one that manages color. Emission color is the one that manages color. So we can make it like a nice hologram green and bam, we're off to the races. So very, very cool. Now what's even cooler is we can then combine it. So we can go for like a mix RGB, slap that down there, go multiply, and we're gonna take the distance of this one into this one and turn this up. And uh, now, um, it's, uh, it's, oh, that's right, because we need the color in. Bring that in here. And uh, we can also take this into the density. And now what we've got is basically the ability to mix and match all this stuff and have it glow which is exactly what we want. Now we are getting a little bit of spill down here. Um, and this is something I've noticed with EV and with volumes is that sometimes when you get far away, it starts to, you can see through it. So uh, one thing to do with volumes uh, to increase the, 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 the quality of the image is to actually turn up your, uh, where is it? Under volumetrics in the rendering tab, come to volumetrics and uh, you change your tile size to two. So the smaller the tile size, the more detail you're gonna get in your volume. Um, you can also change the number of samples and stuff. The start and end, so in AV, it's it's gotta do some tricks to get things to work. Um, basically setting the start and end uh, does clean up that problem where it was seeing through, right? And it looks good, but be aware if you've got this set and you, you kind of move back, there's gonna be a point where it just disappears. So it's kind of telling Blender, like what's the range at which it needs to worry about rendering this thing, I think. And that has something to do with the way it manages its depth buffers and complex crazy stuff. But anyways, that's how we can fix it. All right, so let's uh, let's finish this off. So um, I'm gonna come over to uh, my shader and I'm gonna take my Verona shader and I'm gonna switch it to, let's switch it to Manhattan. And I'm gonna take Manhattan and I'm gonna switch this to constant. And then I'll take my scale up a bit. And then let's take, let's see. I'm gonna rotate this on the Y 45 degrees. And I'll take my randomness down to zero. And you can see we get this nice grid pattern. And what's so cool is that you're getting to see these noise patterns like actually in 3D, which is, uh, which is really neat, I think. Okay, so how can we turn something like this into something that looks right. Let's uh, let's see, what does a hologram really look like? I think if we just had like layers, can I use the Z plane to create those layers? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Emission strength up a bit. So uh, in order to do that, let's move this out a bit and I will grab a math node and I'll plug it in here and I'll set this to multiply and I'll just turn this up. Now it's just really gonna start to glow get nice and hot. Looks good. I turn my, uh, so if you come over to the modifiers tab, uh, underneath the VESH volume modifier, I'll just turn my voxel count up to 64. So I've multiplied it by two, just doubled it up. Um, and I've also turned my exterior boundary uh, band, sorry, what's this mean? Uh, bandwidth, exterior bandwidth down to zero. So what this does is it basically, if I increase this number, it's gonna basically expand outside the mesh bounds, but I want it to stay within the bounds completely. I can also turn off fill volume and that's kind of cool because then we can create um, we can create a hollow mesh, which that's that might be nice for a hologram because in the bottom one can be, you know, that sort of dim look. And now what's so cool about this is that, you know, you can animate these things now and, and you know, get these things like we could make this rotate. All right, what can we bring in that would be cool to see in here? So I'm gonna take this, this is the hero ship from our Epic Space Battles uh, tutorial series. Again, if you wanna get a hold of this, you can find it on Patreon, uh, the actual project file. Um, you can access, access that uh, at the $20 level now. And then um, if you want all the tutorials on how, how we made this guy, um, you can get those either by becoming a YouTube channel member at the uh, All Access Pass level, or you can join up on Patreon as well. Um, and that works. So here's our hero ship. So let's take this guy and turn him into a hologram. Let's see if this works. So I'm gonna take my top volume and I'm gonna change my object to small wing is what it ended up being called. And I'm gonna position him right at zero, zero, zero. And yeah. There he is, look at that. Oh, this is very exciting. Very, very exciting. All right, let's switch to render view, see what it looks like. Oh, that's so cool. So now um, 
naturally can, we can hardly see what he looks like. So um, we can improve that probably by coming over here and uh, changing some of these things. We could fill the volume. Uh, we could expand out the exterior just to give it a bit more definition. Um, we could make more voxels if we wanted to, but we could take whatever the object is and select all the bottom faces. And then if we took that and we hit Shift D to duplicate and then Control P to separate, no, it's not Control P, just regular P, separate by selection, we leave edit mode and then there it is. And we go into edit mode, select all, hit E to extrude, make sure we're, and then we're gonna grab it on the Z, bring it down and scale it like this. Yeah, if we just change the interior band, it's gonna kind of thin it out Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, again, really powerful, a lot of great things you could pull off with this, and I'm excited to see, yeah, where it's gonna come in handy. So, anyways, thanks so much for watching right today. Um, please like the channel, uh, like the video if you enjoyed this and you wanna watch more like it. Um, please hit the subscribe button. Please subscribe so I help the channel to grow. It really means a lot. Check out the Patreon, check out channel memberships, all that stuff. Get cool emojis, little badges next to your name. It's so worth it. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel for everyone that does. And uh, yeah, have a fantastic rest of your day. If you're in America, happy Thanksgiving. And um, I will uh, catch all of you later. See ya. Thanks for watching. Bye.